<laughs> He's too excited about the prospect. That's just not right. I tell you. We're going to be in Ephesians 4 this afternoon. Uh, we are coming to the end of chapter 4. Um, <laughs> and heading into chapter 5 uh, shortly. Uh, but uh, uh, we'll, go, we'll go ahead and we'll start reading uh, in verse 26, read down to verse 32. I know we preached some of this already, but uh, it, it all kind of goes together. Uh, but uh, verse 26 says, Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you for the spirit that was working within each one of us, Lord. Uh, God, I pray that you would open up our eyes of understanding as we, as we uh, look at your word. I pray that you would speak to us, Lord, as only you can. Uh, God, give me the words to say. Lord, help me to preach with power. Uh, not of my own power or of my own making, Lord. I, I don't have any. Uh, Lord, but I need you. God, I pray that you would give me the, give me what I need, Lord, to preach your truth. Father, and I pray that you would you would sanctify your, your people, Lord. I pray that you would do what needs to be done in our hearts. And Lord, that you might be glorified in all of it. We thank you, Father, for all that you do and uh, all that you've given to us, starting with Jesus. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We have been continuing through the study of Ephesians chapter in Ephesians. Um, and here in chapter 4, we'll be talking about walking worthy. Um, and uh, as of the last several weeks, the practical workings of that Christian walk, what it, what it really means. If you get down right down to the practical part, if we really believe God can change us on the inside, and I don't know about you, but I believe it. Amen? Well, Brother Frank believes it, and Jimmy believes it. So that's good. Uh, I hope the rest of us believe it too. Uh, the, 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 what God did for, or what Jesus did for us, isn't just a a a, a ticket out of hell or a get out of hell free card or a, a ticket to heaven. It isn't uh, even just the hope of that, but it's it's a complete change of our life. It is the new birth uh, that's promised in John chapter three. It is uh, being born of the Spirit. And as we're born of the Spirit, uh, there are some things that change. You know, we know that uh, things don't change right away. Not everything changes right away. We're clean right away. Praise the Lord for that. We are, we are uh, we're forgiven right away. Praise the Lord. We're justified right away. But there's this process called sanctification. It takes a while. <laughs> and uh, Philippians talks, talks about it, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform the day of Jesus Christ. It's that, that continual working of, of the Spirit of God in our lives through the Word of God. Uh, as he sanctifies us and makes us more and more like Jesus Christ so that just like according to Ephesians chapter 1, we can be made to be accepted and made to be the praise of his glory. Our lives should glorify him, uh, not just because we say we're Christians and we sing and we, and we, and we play some songs. And what a blessing that is to have Jake uh, having a desire to, to, uh, to play. Um, and uh, he has, I, I had, I've had people surprise me when they, when they come up. And it doesn't happen very often. I can remember when Arnie came, asked me if he could play special, and I was like, sure, Arnie. And then he came in here, and he played, and I wasn't, he wasn't Mozart, but, but man, he, it, what a blessing it was. Uh, he, he was playing a, a song that I actually recognized, and, it, and, and he was just praising the Lord with it. And that's really what it comes down to, is our heart. And Jake, Jake mentioned a couple weeks ago that um, I, 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 I was teasing him, and I said, when are you going to start playing your guitar in here? And he goes, well, when I need to know the songs so I can practice. And he was here with his guitar on Sunday. I said, well, let's go over the songs. So praise the Lord for that, and I appreciate that. Um, because, well, I'm not that good. <laughs> and I'm, I'm thankful that we have young people that have a desire to serve. Um, and uh, uh, what a blessing that is. Uh, Arnie says Hello. Uh, what a, he's such a sweetheart. Um, not not Earl Arnie. <laughs> <laughs> but Earl says, but he's cute. Oh goodness. Uh, your wife told you so. 
Well, I'm glad your wife thinks you're cute. Um, somebody's got to. Uh, <laughs> so uh, this morning we talked about uh, verse, verse number 27. Sorry, verse number 28. With him that stole, steal no more. Uh, but rather let them labor. Now we know that uh, there aren't a whole lot of people that run around uh, acting as thieves and making their livelihood as thieves. At least um, most people don't. Even most non-Christians don't. Uh, but we talked about those motivations that cause them to, the covetousness, the idleness, and the, and the self-indulgence that, that causes them to steal. And all those, those same things happen in the lives of Christians, uh, especially uh, in, our, in our country where we're overindulgent and we, 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 we cover ourselves in debt and uh, just so that we can have the next thing. And that limits what the, the, the thing that we're to put on. And that was that we're to put on that we work hard uh, that we might have so that we can then give. And it's uh, what a blessing it is to be able to be in a position when you can bless somebody else with the finances that God has blessed you with. And, and uh, if, if every, I know not every Christian can get to that point. Uh, it's just sometimes they're just not phys- physically able to work those kinds of jobs to make that kind of money. Uh, but, but what a blessing it is that we as a body of Christ can come together and, and be that blessing for one another. Now, I won't preach any more on that. Uh, the next verse, and I, actually, before we get there, I, I didn't, uh, let's jump back one, one verse, uh, just a moment, and uh, uh, it says, uh, verse 26, be angry and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. And if you'll, if you'll notice with me, um, at the end of that is a, is a colon, I think that's what it's called, right, right, all our teachers, it's a colon. Uh, so it's not the end of the thought. Uh, and the next verse goes on to say, um, need to give place to the devil, period. And that's the end of that thought. Uh, but it's important for us to understand that, that we can give place to the devil in lots of different ways, uh, other than just by going to bed angry <laughs> or allowing our anger to control us. Uh, it is very important for us to protect our hearts. The Bible tells us over and over again to guard our hearts, to protect our minds. Uh, and Satan is always looking for a place, always looking for a way uh, to to find a way to attack us. And we're going to go into chapter 6, and we've already covered it this year, although it's been six months ago, uh, so maybe I can preach through it again. Uh, but we've already covered the armor of God that God gives us to protect. Why? Because we have an enemy, a spiritual enemy, and we're, we're, we're battling spiritual forces. And, and he, is, he is out to destroy our testimony. He is out to limit what we can do uh, as children of God. He's out to, 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 to wreck our faith uh, and, uh, and uh, to cause us to, to, to turn and run and to not to persevere. And, uh, but Ephesians 6 says we do all that so that we can stand. Uh, in, in the day of in, in the day of that trial, in the day of attack, and and that we can stand firm uh, on on our, our on, on the rock of our salvation, stand firm upon the word of God. Many things we could say we're standing firm, but not to move away from the gospel or or our truth. But uh, but we need to be very careful about giving place to the devil. And I'll be honest, it's easy to um, in this world that we live in. Where, where we're inundated with temptations, where we're inundated with, um, with uh, sin all around us, um, we need to be very careful that we are not allowing um, Satan to have any part or any place in our lives. And that's what, that's what the word means there. It says, it says uh, neither give place, and it means uh, a, a position. Uh, to the devil, uh, we talk about having, having strongholds in our in our lives, and sometimes uh, that could be a habit that we have that we've not given, that we've not yet had victory over, and he'll have that stronghold, and it is difficult to break down a stronghold. It's called a stronghold for a reason, uh, because Satan has has a, his grips in there, and it's difficult for us to to overcome that. Uh, the, not saying we cannot, because we have victory through Jesus. Greater is He that is in you than He that is in this world. But why would you leave your back door open? Why would you leave your windows unlocked? Uh, why would you let the Trojan horse in? Now, think, about, think about your house and how you protect your house. How many of you lock your doors? We lock our doors at night anyways. Um, <laughs> when we're all there. Ain't got nothing worth stealing anyways. Uh, uh, but uh, but when, when the kids are there, and especially Zeke, if, Zeke, if Zeke's listening, uh, he, uh, he, 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 he came into my, our, my room one night, the other night and he said, buddy, it's time for bed. He goes, but, but the, the, if they break in with an ax, they might, they might steal me. And I said, they're not going to steal you, buddy. Daddy will shoot them first. He says, what if they come to my room first? <laughs> it's closer to the door. He's a smart kid. 
Uh, you know, we lock our doors for a reason because uh, while most most people's homes do, do not get broken into, there are those people out there that, are, that look for opportunities to do it. Listen, Satan is looking for an opportunity. Don't leave your door unlocked. Don't leave your window unlocked. Right? Uh, and, and even more than that, don't, uh, don't let the Trojan horse in. And this is even worse. Uh, sometimes things that seem to be innocuous, that seem to be safe, uh, uh, we allow them into our homes, and it's just as bad as if uh, we, uh, just as bad as if we had uh, uh, invited the enemy in. Because the, in truth, we have uh, the, the Trojan horse. We talk about the Trojan horse, and that's the the, the epitome of the these these soldiers hiding inside of this this big statue. Uh, they leave it as a gift, and the king goes, "Oh, look! They they, they, they didn't they didn't attack us, and they left us a gift." Well, yeah, <laughs> they just want it inside. Uh, and and Satan will do the same thing, whether it's through your TV, through your radio, through what you're reading, uh, the music you listen to. Um, so just don't give Satan any opportunities. It's like if you're on a diet, don't go to McDonald's for lunch. There's nothing good there to eat, and it isn't going to do you any good. And, uh, you know, it's just, if, your back's, if, you, if you hurt your back, don't sit in a dunk tank. It's not good for you. <laughs> I, have, I have a heart-shaped bruise in, the, in between my shoulder blades, for, only from the first fall. It's the only time it, hurt, it actually really hurt. Uh, but uh, uh, I didn't sit right, and it, it smacked, me, smacked, smacked me in the back. And you know, Just don't put yourself in a position where you can be hurt. Uh, don't give Satan that position, because he, he will t- he'll make use of it. So that's all I really wanted to say. I wanted to make sure I said that. All right. The Bible says in verse 29, this is our next verse, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Remember, we're putting off one thing for putting on another. We're putting off that which is corrupted. We're putting off that old man and putting on the new man. Uh, and, and we're to put off corrupt communication. Uh, the, the word corrupt there literally means, sorry Marge, putrid. Think of something that's old and rotten. Uh, think of a carcass uh, lying on the side of the road that's turned to just goo. I mean, that's, that's the putridness that uh, it's talking about. The, sorry, I, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry at all. I, I, I do it because it's kind of fun sometimes. <laughs> She, she's dealt with it. She's okay now. Good. Uh, but that's, that's what it's talking about. This, don't allow this corrupt communication. Well, what is corrupt communication? Uh, what exactly is it? Is it, is it four-letter words? Because there's a whole list of four-letter words out there, or, or we would call them swear words. And listen, that's corrupt, that is corrupt communication. Uh, and, we should, and we as Christians should not speak that way. Uh, uh, our, 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 our language should be different uh, of that than the world, and we need to make sure that we're putting off uh, that, that kind of communication. But it isn't just that. And many times when we think about corrupt communication, that's the picture. You have the, the picture of the, the, the guy who swears like a sailor. And, and we shouldn't swear like a sailor. We shouldn't swear at all. And we most definitely shouldn't be taking the Lord's name in vain, which is a very common thing uh, in, in our culture today. Uh, but uh, that is absolutely it goes against the Word of God. But, but beyond that, we need to understand the power in our words. Uh, the, the Bible tells us that uh, in Proverbs chapter 11, 9, if you would, wouldn't mind turning there with me. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 9. It says this, A hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor. Uh, that word hypocrite there means one who, you, the, the Hebrew actually means one who uses evil words. This is a, a hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor, but through knowledge the just shall be delivered. Uh, listen, we need to be very careful. Our evil words can destroy. Uh, evil words can destroy. Proverbs, uh, uh, sorry, Proverbs 18 verse 21. Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21 tells us this, uh, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Now, uh, it's amazing that there's life in the power of the tongue, but there is also death. Uh, Proverbs 25, verse 18. Proverbs chapter 25. Verse 18 says this, A man that beareth false witness against his neighbor is a maul and a sword and a sharp 
arrow. Our words can, can injure. Our words can kill. Our words can, can tear down and destroy. And if you've never seen, uh, seen that take place, it's, it's, it, 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 it's amazing uh, how you can watch somebody just crumble under somebody who has the, uh, I, I don't want to say the word talent. Uh, some people call it a talent to be able to be uh, so uh, verbo- verbocious. I'm not sure if that's the word. Uh, they're, they're so good with their words. Uh, they have such a, a command of the English language, and, and they're so witty and intelligent, they can literally just pick you apart and rip you into little pieces and leave you in a crumbling, uh, heaping mess on the floor, and they can feel good about themselves about it. Listen, our words can do that. Uh, and the, and that, that would be included in this corrupt communication. Uh, it's 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 a uh, it's it's a word. There are words that will cause strife. There are words that will cause division. There are words that will stir up malice and anger. There are words that will, will that will cause pain in the heart of somebody. There are words uh, that will that, that will uh, that could literally uh, dis- destroy a church. Listen, there, there there are words that are corrupt. They're putrid in the eyes of God. He doesn't look at that kind of communication. Those that kind of language. Those kinds of words. Is something that should ever be coming out of the heart of a child of God. Do you know why? Because what the Bible tells us, Jesus says, what proceeds out of the mouth, where it comes from, is our heart. And if you and I have been saved by Jesus Christ, we understand the power of God and how he cleanses us and how he changes us. And he took us from what we once were, and now he has made us something brand new. About what 2 Corinthians says, uh, the old man's passed away, behold, all things become new. Uh, praise God for that. Well, if that's what's happened, then what's inside of us is different, amen? Then what comes out of our mouths should be different than what it used to be. So we're to take off that corrupt communication, we're to... To cast it aside, I can remember uh, there was a period of time in my life when when uh, my uh, when my when my communication was corrupt. Uh, uh, now I was careful about when it was I was careful about when it, when it was corrupt and when it wasn't corrupt. But can I tell you, a, a tainted well is a tainted well, whether the, whether the words sound bad or not. Uh, James chapter three talks about can can uh, uh, can uh, sweet water and bitter water come out of the same well? God forbid, it should not happen. Now, there are times when we can pretend it, but listen, what's inside, it's all coming from the same thing, right? That was putrid. I just hit it. You know, you can, you can, you can run water through a filter and take away scents and smells and other things, but if there's poison in there, it's still poison. It's still corrupt communication. I, pray, I praise God that God cleaned up my inside so that the outside what I brought forth out of my mouth was not an offense to him any longer. Luke chapter 6, Luke chapter 6, verse 43 and 45, 43 through 45. It says this, for a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bringeth forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of bramble bush gather they grapes. A good man out of the good treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth Speaketh. We need to make sure and understand that if we are saved, uh, what what's coming out of us is is out of the abundance of our heart. Now, here's a question: Can this the the way it's phrased, the way it's written to the church, it's written to Christians? Amen. So, if it's written to Christians, why is the communication coming out of their mouth still at times corrupt? Has God changed their inside? Has God saved them? Has God forgiven them? Has God cleansed them? He sure has. You know what the problem is? They have yet to cast off the old, to renew their mind, the spirit of their mind, and then put on the new. You can be saved and still, and, and still be entangled in the things of your past life. You don't have to be. Praise God, you don't have to be, but you can be. There's a reason why Paul was saying, listen, for three chapters, he was reminding them of the gospel and the power of the gospel, what Jesus Christ did for them. Now he's telling them in chapter 4, walk worthy, and this is the practical side of it. Why? Because, well, they say, I believe it, but it's not showing forth in the life. The key to that is found in, in that verse between the putting off and the putting on, and that's the renewing of the spirit of your mind. Because you can, 
you can, you got, a, you got this thing in your mouth called, or in your brain called a filter. Now, you may have bad things in here because you haven't been renewing the spirit of your mind, right? You've been, you've been, you've been putting junk in, in all day long and uh, working around people that are swearing, uh, listening to whatever music's being played, watching whatever's on the television. Man, it's just, it's coming in everywhere. And, and then you got to call home. And this is what, ha- this, this is how I got outed. Uh, <clears throat> Back, this is back when I never swore in front, in front of my wife. This is this was shortly after we were married. Um, I, I I swore I swore like a sailor. Uh, I thought I was on my way from from work to a meeting, and I I, I was it was busy. It was crazy and uh, crazy busy, and I had a, a rescue meeting I had to get to. And after working a twenty four hour shift, hadn't had time to eat. We'd been running all day long. And I was tired. When you're tired, things slip, right? You're not quite as careful as you used to be. I called my wife and I I, I said, listen, I, I'll, I'll be there as quick. I'll be home as soon as I can, but I've got to go to this meeting first, and I love you, so on and so forth. And then my phone rings, and I answer the phone, and I'm driving along, and I'm eating a sandwich. A sandwich, is that what you guys call it up here? Sandwich, what we call it in Ohio. I'm picking up Maine lingo. It's not right. Uh, I know I know Mainers that do. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, they, they were eat, eating a sandwich, and I was eating my sandwich, talking on the phone, driving all at the same time, and not okay, especially nowadays. That was back before those things were illegal, um, and so don't give me a ticket now. Uh, but uh, so that's I, I'm driving, and uh, I was talking to my sister. She had called, and uh, I, I I got thirsty. I put the sandwich down, grabbed a diet Pepsi, and took a drink of my diet Pepsi, and I put that down. And I must have been, I'm sure I was swerving because, well, I was talking on the phone, eating and, and doing all this stuff at the same time. And as soon as I did that, uh, talking to my sister on the phone, uh, blue lights lit up behind me. And, uh, and you know what happens when you, if you swear, and hopefully you don't swear, but prayerfully you don't swear. You know what happens with that? There it went. And we're like, <gasps> I was on the phone. I am so sorry. Uh, I, I I wrote it off as I'd been around it all day, and, and it, which is true. But see, the reason it came out was because it was in here, right? It wouldn't have come out if it wasn't already in here. Uh, I just let it slip. Uh, uh, my, I was tired. I was I was busy, and I was caught off guard and surprised. And there it was. And I apologized to, to my sister. I said, "I'm sorry. I, I I never swear in front of you. I I you know I." I, I I don't do it very often. You know, I made all the excuses and all the lies. Uh, and and she, said, she played it off like it was no big deal. But what happened? I slipped. What do you mean I slipped? I, wasn't, I was saved, but I hadn't been, I wasn't fully right with the Lord yet. He was still cleansing me and clean, cleaning me up. And I let the real me show. And I felt bad about it. And I went back to work the next day. And when the guys got to talking and about all the things that they talked about and all and swear and all the things they did, you know what I did the next day was different? I went and found something else to do. I started my Bible. And I stopped they thought I didn't like like them anymore. I mean I would eat with them. We would, it wasn't like I completely ignored them, but any time uh, the, the swearing would get really bad or any time the, 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 they would start talking about things that I knew I shouldn't be involved in, I'd just I'd walk away. I'd stop putting it in here. Instead, I started filtering myself with this. And you know what happens if you have a bucket full of holes? My head's full of holes. So it, whatever I put in runs right back out, right? We got, what do we got, two ears and a mouth and nose, there's, what, there's five holes right there. <laughs> you got a bucket full of holes, full of dirt, and you keep putting water in it, what's going to happen? The water's going to come out, and it's going to take the dirt out with it. When we say, when I, when I use, when the Bible uses the word, the phrase renewing the spirit of your mind, what it's literally talking about is saturating your mind with the word of God, and the, or as Jesus said in the next chapter, wash the washing of the water by the word. And it's, it's washing all that junk and all that gunk out. So you, if, if you're struggling with, with uh, your words and the fact that you rip people up or you tear them down or you destroy them or you're talking behind people's back or gossip or whatever it is that corrupt communication is in your mouth, uh, here's what you do. Stop listening to it. Stop taking it in. 
this is the, this is the casting off part, right? Because we're to cast off the, the old man and to put on the new man. So you stop listening to it, you stop talking, or stop, you stop reading it, you stop listening to it, stop watching it on TV. Uh, you, it's just, you remove yourself from it, and then you fill your mind with this book. And it won't be this, like that, right? It's not going to be day number one, aha, I got it, I have victory. You'll do better, but you got to keep working at it because the dirt's still in there. It takes a while because Satan doesn't like to give up. And Satan doesn't like to let go. And he'll get you pulled over, over and over again. And, and there'll be people that cut you off. And you'll be using the words that you forgot you, you knew. And you're like, oh, what? I, but I don't want to do this. Why? Keep filling your mind with this book. And eventually that stuff will be gone. Why? Because, because what's in here is what proceeds out of here. And if what's in here is the word of God, then, then it's not that corrupt communication that we're talking about. It, it, it's, it's almost too simple. But that's a sim- God made it simple because we're simple people. We, we don't have to be a rocket scientists to be able to figure out how, to, how to, to be renewed spiritually. You don't have to be some guru sitting up on a mountain somewhere to be able to figure out how to control your tongue. Uh, uh, all you have to be is submitted unto the Spirit of God and the Word of God and inundate yourself and saturate yourself with the Word of God. So you put off that which is old, the old man, and you put on, I'm going to say you put on, the new man. It says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good. To the use of edifying. That word edifying, what's it talking about? It's talking about the building up of. So the people that you talk to, they're no longer torn down by your words. Whether your friends or your enemies. They're, they're built up. They're encouraged, they're strengthened. And it says, it says, uh, the, the, it says uh, uh, for the use of edifying, the building up, that it may minister, or to, 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 to administer, grace unto the hearers. Graciousness. Listen, only God can give us real grace. But we can show grace, and we can show graciousness to others with our words. You ever try to get in a fight with somebody? that refuse to fight you back? Soft answer, turn away wrath. Don't let our flesh control us. Let our spirit control us. I, I, I love the, 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 next, the, next, the very next verse. It says this, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Why? Why is that? Such, well, it's a big deal because the Holy Spirit is is uh, is what empowers us. It's, it's what we're to be uh, filled with, and 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 uh, it's that Holy Spirit that strengthens our inner man. Amen. So so why would we not want to grieve him? Well, because we don't want to limit what the Spirit can do through us. Uh, we want the Holy Spirit to, to be able to, 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 to bless somebody else through us as we witness the gospel. We want him to, to as, we, as we preach a message or as we serve or whatever we do, we want the Spirit to be able to, to do something. We want God to work. Well, at VBS, we just had a, God blessed with, with VBS, had a great time. But you know what? It wasn't anything that we did. As much as I appreciate all the work that people did, all the organization, uh, praise God for all of that. But uh, nothing would be accomplished without the work of the Holy Spirit. We could have had uh, we could have had a, a full carnival out here with rides and everything, with elephants, and and nothing would have been accomplished for God if the Holy Spirit was was grieved. That's why it's important not to grieve the Holy Spirit. Uh, but we can grieve him by the things that we do, by the sin we allow in our lives. And we go back to Psalm 78, which, which we, we won't because I'm just about done and not really preaching on this, uh, this, this, this verse anyways. But uh, we see how much God, God was limited because of the sin of the people of Israel. And we don't want God to be limited because of our sin. He's talking to, here in, in Ephesians, Paul's talking to, to the church and says, it says, let him that stole, steal no more. Rather do this. Uh, these are the things you need to put off, and then you can put on these things. And so this practical life of ours uh, is, is, is so that we wa- can walk according to the, the word of God, uh, under the, through the power of God, and the, uh, through, the, through the work of the word of God in our lives, so that we can serve God. So that God can empower us. And because, listen, we need, to, for, us to, for us to continue on in the Christian life, we're going to need God's strength. We can't, we can't do it on our own. 
But I, I encourage you. While we talk about this this practical this practical walk of of, of this practicality or the practical walk work in a Christian life or a Christian walk, whatever it is, we need the Word. Read the Word. Study the Word. Renew your spirit in the Word. Wake up with it. Go to bed with it. Memorize it. Write it upon the tables of your heart. It's everything to us. If we're gonna if we're gonna walk in His way, we need the Word. We need not take it for granted. We need not leave it behind. We we need not get so it may not may it not become so common to us that we forget the power that's in the Word. Let's go ahead and pray, Father God. I thank you for this this afternoon, Lord, and just the work. Uh, of your word in our lives. Lord, we, I pray that you'd help us to just saturate our hearts and our minds uh, with it, help us to memorize it, Lord, uh, to keep it before us at all times, put a guard upon our hearts and our minds, Lord, that uh, as we go forth here, Lord, that we would be able to edify one another with our words. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to, 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 sp- to speak um, those things that are good, Father, those things that would build up, uh, those, those words that would... Uh, uh, honor, honor you, Father. Uh, may our whole life just be uh, a blessing to you. We ask these things in Jesus' precious name.